Hey, what's going on guys? John here, and today I'm actually doing a demo of the Go-Kart 9Bot Pro electric go-kart. Um, so here you can see I'm actually riding this around. This is something that I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a demo here of me riding the go-kart around. And then I'm actually going to flip this over and show you more on the go-kart itself. So let's get into it. Hope you guys enjoy it. Okay, so you initially got to see me ride this around and get an idea of what this thing looks like. Um, in this detailed video, obviously, I'm going to spend a little bit more time going through and talking about some of the things about this go-kart in terms of setup. We'll talk a little bit about some of the features and options, um, the Bluetooth speaker, the phone app that it actually comes with, and I'm just going to try to go through as much of it as I possibly can. So let's first start with the installation and setup. Um, when you get this, everything is pretty much um, more or less assembled out of the box. There's very few things that you need to do. Um, the first thing is that they're going to actually have you adjust um, the base where the actual pedals and the whole front of the frame come out. So you have multiple points here all along where you can see my finger is, and you can go all the way to this max or minimum point. Um, I keep it at the max point. I'm about five foot ten. And um, this is pretty much perfect for me. So um, I would say if you're like really tall, like 6'2 or above, this may be a little bit crammed for you and it may be a little bit difficult. You have these nice um, sections here in the front for both the brake and gas that you can kind of rest your foot into and leave it there in that sort of stationary spot. Um, they do have you adjust the steering wheel column. So this actually is gonna be very loose out of the box and you have what's called a quick quick release. So this allows like, let's say someone else wants to use the nine bot and um, you know, you want them to be able to adjust the steering wheel up or down. You actually have this quick release here. So this will actually come up and you can actually uh, move this on different um, holes here. And there's basically just a nut on the other side, um, which I can kind of show here that you can just loosen or retighten. You also have to install the Bluetooth speaker. So essentially this has a plastic piece that sits on the frame and then you've got these straps that hold this tightly in place. And then the speaker itself um, just hooks down onto this frame piece. And if you wanna remove the speaker, say for charging, you actually just push in um, these two plastic pieces on either side and then lift it completely out. Um, you do have an e-brake on the 9Bot uh, go-kart so this is something you can use for obviously drifting purposes if you're in like sport or track mode you can use this while going around tight corners and get some really nice drifts out of this I haven't spent a ton of time doing that but um, obviously that it's gonna be a given when you utilize it you also do have to install the um, the rear wing this is pretty straightforward this just hooks in you have these two pieces that come down they hook into um, these plastic pieces here on the back and then you actually have this optional um, flag that you can mount up here in the back. I choose to actually keep it on. It comes with a little Segway um, flag that's on it. And I like to keep this on just because if you're driving this around, um, it's just gonna allow for people to have a little more awareness that you're actually there since this is so low to the ground. Um, you do have uh, a seat belt that's obviously included with this. So this is pretty straightforward. You just clip this in and then you, when you wanna unbuckle it, you just simply squeeze these up. Um, one thing I noticed with this is the bucket seat is very, very tight. There's not really a lot of adjustability here. Um, I weigh roughly around 190, 200, and um, this does squeeze me a little bit, but I'm still able to sit in it comfortably and not really like feel like I'm discomforted while actually driving this around. So if you are someone that um, you know is roughly taller and you know, good size adult, you could probably fit in this no problem. So that's something I really loved about this. Um, you do have uh, some batteries that get installed here up in the top. So this is, uh, you know, used for just some basic functionality with the device. In terms of the Bluetooth speaker, um, this actually has some engine motor sounds. So you can power this on by hitting this button. It has like an engine start revving sound. And then you can choose to connect this to like say your phone if you wanted to just use it as a standard Bluetooth speaker. But by default, um, if you connect it to the actual 9Bot, once the uh, go-kart's powered on, it can go through multiple modes and it will simulate a sound of the engine which actually matches the speed of the acceleration. So if I hit the gas a little bit, I, I don't know specifically what mode it's in now. It almost sounds almost like a motorcycle potentially. You can hear it kind of goes it like gives it a little bit of a go so i believe it works based on motion um, and that's how it comes up with the sounds so you can change these sounds by simply just hitting the button down here that actually went into the music mode 
So if we go back to the engine mode, you can hit the button above and it will rotate through all the different sounds basically. So that one's like a motorcycle. This one's like an electric vehicle, I believe. This almost sounds like a sports car or like a V8. Another style like sports car. And this one's like a smaller engine. And then I believe back to the bike. So it's kind of funny, you can drive this around. Obviously if you want to have it loud or completely turned off or play music, whatever you want to do, you have all those options. Um, I'm gonna power this off just for sake of the video so we're not hearing it. It kind of does like a little engine rubbing sound or racing sound as you power it off. In terms of um, the go-kart itself and charging, you have an indicator here in the back. It's a little dirty here, um, but basically this is the power button. You can see the Bluetooth is basically enabled. And then we also have the battery indicator so we can see how much life is left in the battery. Um, usually this is gonna last, I'd probably say roughly four to five actual miles on a charge, depending on if you're running in track mode or how aggressive you're going, um, you know, driving it. You have the charging port here, which is pretty straightforward. When you're done, you just simply unplug this. This actually has an extension cord. And then I actually um, back it up into my garage over here and I will essentially reverse it into this space. And I just have the charger here. It has um, one cable that then runs to a bigger brick and then that has a connector here. So usually I'll just plug it in. The connector is pretty simple. It has like a little divot here on the end. So it's hard to, you know, screw that up. And then it also comes with a USB-C cable that you can use to charge the Bluetooth speaker, which you have to do separately. Um, overall, I've been very, very happy with the Ninebot Pro. I'm actually going to um, show you guys the cell phone as well. I'm gonna connect that now to Bluetooth. Let's transition over to that and I'll show you some of the options you can do with the actual mobile app as well. All right, so I've connected the Segway 9Bot app to the actual go-kart, and I wanted to give you some idea of what the app can do and some of the settings that you have. So when you go to set this up for the first time, um, essentially you have um, a location here so you can see it actually knows my pinpointed location based on the GPS. You can actually record your ride, so it'll give you kind of a um, idea of all the places that you went during that specific ride. Um, you can see I've gone a total of 10.6 miles since I've had it. Um, my current remaining battery is at 100% and then the total um, mileage as well. That Now, beyond that, you have some settings here. This allows you to either unlock or lock the go-kart, so this can be used as like a security thing. You can go up here and actually um, rename the device or add other devices. Maybe if you buy other Segway products or another Segway go-kart, you can do that. Um, you can also, I believe, rename it in here. I just left it as the default. Um, you have lighting effects. So this actually has both a rear light and a glow light, and you've got all kinds of different options like single wave, dynamic breathing, all these different things that you can change specifically for the lighting. Um, right now, that's not really gonna work too well since it's daytime. You also have something called dynamic turning. So right now that's off, but this basically is something that is powered by the inner and outer wheels. It says the vehicle can create a more prominent turning effect on the head or tail. Um, I have not tested this, but I have watched some content around this and you know most people seem to think that it doesn't really seem to make too much of a difference, but it might be something worth you know testing out. You have basic info here, so your firmware, your total riding miles, the vehicle temperature, when it was activated, um, your battery and any battery maintenance. You also have a new rider tutorial. They will require that you go through the entire tutorial in order to enable the sport or track mode, so I do highly recommend doing that. Um, you can also unbind this if for any reason, maybe you sell it or whatever. Um, Beyond that, you've got your basic settings. There's an anti-theft alarm. You can actually allow power off allowed when it's locked, a driving alarm, and you can even read like black box data. So there's all kinds of features built into this. Um, additionally, we have like a profile for myself. I basically set up a Segway profile. You earn like coins within their system. You can have little tasks, all the notifications, any favorites, things like that. So this allows you to connect to the Segway community. If you actually go in here, you can see there's people uh, essentially posting photos of them going out doing rides or whatever it may be. Basically like a social media platform for specifically the um, Segway. Now beyond that, with the device itself, you can also tr change this so um, you could go in and change the different modes. So essentially what this will allow you to do is go between um, all the different um, modes that you would want to normally do. Um, I think in order to do that, and I only had to do this once, 
that actually puts it in lock mode. So it's currently locked. Now we've unlocked it. And I believe if we want to go change the ride, so you can go down here. This is where it is here. You can turn on the headlight, do firmware, and then this is where you change the different modes. So safe mode is essentially the beginner mode. New rider will kind of give you, I believe, up to about five to um, 10 miles an hour. So safe mode, I think, is five miles an hour. New rider is like 12 miles an hour. Sports mode is about 18 miles an hour. And then track mode is like 24 to 25. If you click on more details, this will kind of give you an idea of like how to unlock all the modes and um, doing all this. If I go into sport mode, it says 17.4, new rider 11.2, and then safe is five miles an hour. So this would be a good starting point for maybe like a young child, something like that. And then if you're really ready to go, track mode goes up to 23. Um, I have found while using this overall, I haven't really had any problems. Um, I typically keep it in track mode. And one of the biggest things is almost treating this like a car. So while you're driving it and actually hitting the gas, you, you can't really, it's not like hitting the gas and it goes 24. You have to completely stomp it down just like you would with a car. And I didn't actually realize that when I was first using it. And I thought maybe it was a little underpowered um, and it just took, you know, a little getting used to. So overall, I'm very, very happy with the nine bot go-kart pro. I really think um, it offers a lot of value for what it is. It gets a lot of attention. It's really fun to use both for kids and adults. Um, and it's definitely something that's very versatile. You can also take the entire um, back section off and you can actually use the, um, there's an available um, rod that it comes with so you can convert it into a regular Segway. So that's an option you can do as well. And there's plenty of options as well for whatever reason you wear down the tires over time from heavy use, drifting, you can always replace them in the future. So overall, I'm very happy with the Ninebot Go-Kart Pro. Um, hopefully you guys found the video review helpful and my overview on everything, I tried to cover as much as I can. Uh, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.